Tom, that was a sensational win for QPR last night. 2-1 over Luton Town in their own backyard as well. Um, everyone's raving about Michael Frey, Garamoko, Dembele. But what I want from you is kind of like an underrated top performer that you think isn't getting all the praise right now that you're actually quite impressed with. Yeah, like you mentioned, obviously, those two were the sort of standout performers uh, going forwards. But I think um, Sam Field in, in defensive midfield was, was really good. Um, I thought that, he, like you say, underrated, under the radar kind of performance from Sam Field. It was like, especially at 1-0, they were, it, it could have been more, but he was breaking up play quite nicely, kind of making sure that Luton couldn't really get going um, and, and allowed them to get in at half-time just at 1-0 and allowed Sifuentes to make a few adjustments. And I think he is one that has, um, yeah, definitely gone under the radar because of the, the fact that, that Frey and, and Dembele had such good attacking performances, but perhaps without field, they might not have um, picked up all three points. What do you make of QPR's performance as a whole then, mate? Tell, tell me, what were you thinking? Yeah, it was kind of a game of, of two halves. Now, it's a cliche, but they, it was... Um, you know, first half, I thought it was the whole standard of the game was quite poor, to be honest. Um, it was a tough watch, first half. A um, bit scrappy, uh, a couple of set-piece moments, but nothing too um, too much from open play. But second half, QPR looked, looked a little bit more intense. Um, Frey really got going. He was, you know, he was like a, a battering ram, is how I'd describe him up front, um, just sort of smashing into people and making things happen. And I thought that they really improved second half, um, Obviously, the moment at the end where Luton probably should have snatched uh, a point, but overall, I thought QPR were pretty good value for for for, for the point based on their second half performance. First half, I think neither side really um, was particularly great. This is sort of because they've got no hair on their head, but at the same time, I can't help but kind of compare Michael Frey to a, you know a, a Bobby Zamora in his prime for QPR. Uh, I thought he was he was excellent last night. Um, he's got three goals, one assist so far this season. Uh, he's thirty. Um, he's he's been about. He's been all over Europe, Fenerbahce, Lille, um, young boys at Antwerp, where he scored a lot of goals. What what what? Uh, give me give me a view on his performance overall last night because I thought he was. Quite Quality. Yeah, I thought he was. Uh, I thought he was excellent. I thought um, the way he sets up the first goal. Um, again, it's it's great strength, but it's also great composure. He doesn't and great decision making. He doesn't um, be selfish. He notices, notices his teammate, and we've seen quite often already this season players not squaring the balls to their teammate. He does the right thing, um, and obviously that, like that gets them the equaliser. And not too long after, he's got the goal. And I mean, what a strike it is! Um, pure power on it the connection was fantastic so I think what's really exciting about him is he he has got the the ability to get goals like you've mentioned he's got a decent record at other clubs and he's already on three for the season um, which is a strong return as it is but he's also got the ability to bring others into play which I think is really important Um, I think he could be a vital player for QPR um, sort of spearheading their their attack and um, players like Camaraco Dembele who we've mentioned um, will thrive off of playing off of a, a target like like uh, Frey because he can bring others into play as well as scoring and, and taking the chances himself. QPR were just two goals above the bottom three in terms of goals scored last season in the Championship. You've spoken about M- M- Marty Sofentes before and how impressed you are with him, how excited you are by like this QPR side. But having a striker like Michael Frey up top, like that that transformed things. Like they they. When you go from you know scoring only forty seven goals in the entire season to having a man that can you know score a range of finishes, the volley, the header last week, um, the and link up people that that's a massive difference maker. Yeah, no, hundred percent. I think Dembele will as, will be as well, and another player with quality and end product. I think that's the biggest thing for QPR is, is the is the end product, like you mentioned. Didn't have the the goals scored last season, um, but you know added in added. Obviously, Frey was there for a short period, but you've got and only played a few games. But you've got two players there who you'd, you'd back to to get in double figures for for goal contributions at least, if not um, double figures for goal for for Frey. So, yeah, I think it's um, they should be vastly improved in front of goal this year, and that's the big thing because um, defensively, um, I know they were sort of under the cosh a little bit early from Luton, but defensively they 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 looked okay last night. I thought they. They dealt with the, the the threats well. They defended the box fairly well. Um, obviously, the goal uh, is an unfortunate moment. I think if we're going to be hypercritical, Paul Nardi should do better. Um, I think I know he's moving 
one way and the, the head has come the other way, so I understand why he's palmed it, but he sort of palms it back into a very dangerous area and it obviously ricochets off done and, and goes in. Uh, but that's that's misfortune, I think. Outside of that, they look fairly solid. Um, whether that's losing t- town having lacking threat or QPR being defensive solid, I, I, it's too early to say at the stage. But I think that if you add players of of that quality, the numbers surely should should increase for QPR. I don't know about you, but I love an EFL shirt. And I've found the perfect place to pick up beauties like this. The Football League store has thousands of beautiful kits just like these for past and present EFL teams. The season's fast approaching, so get yours before it's too late. Click the link in the description to head to the Football League store. Yeah, Dembele looks like a young Javi Simmons to me. Um, it's kind of clocked the other week that he was that kid with the massive afro. That, or, was it? No, was it, was it the massive afro? No, it was the, he was, he's in the Celtic shirt and he's really young and he's like, the next best thing and you're thinking god this guy's only 13 give him a chance but like he's kind of you know he's dipped off a little bit over the last couple of years he's coming on loan this season this guy looks incredible like uh, I, you know I, I think it's very easy to get carried away after one result but you know he, he should have scored last night I thought well you know when he had that chance just inside the box Frey excellent link up play again but even watching him against Plymouth the other week this guy's he's doing a lot he's bringing you know he's transforming their attack no, 100%. And it's, it's funny you mentioned that. Like, that's why it's so bizarre that he's only 21. Like, he's been, he feels like he's been around for almost a decade, which he has, because obviously he was, came to prominence when he was 13, 14, what it was. And, you know, that's eight years ago, and he's still only not, you know, he's not even anywhere near his prime. So, um, yeah, he's starting to realise some of his potential. Had a really good season for Blackpool last year. Um, and this season he's been, yeah, I mean, last night he was fantastic. There was one as well where he drove to the edge of the box, won the free kick. Um, in really dangerous areas. I think his ability to pick the ball up and drive into the box or make quick darting runs in and around the box is going to be really useful because it's really difficult for defenders to deal with. Um, and I think for a team like QPR who carries some, some decent set piece threat, obviously with Frey and, and, and some of the defenders they've got as well, I think if he can um, get in in his advanced positions, dangerous positions, draw fouls from opposition defenders, then I think uh, he could be really useful from, from from that aspect as well. Yeah, I'm just reading here, Dembele attracted media attention in 2016 when he made his debut for Celtic's under-20s development team at the age of 13 after playing eight matches and scoring once for Celtic. At professional level, he signed for all that, or he signed later in 2022. That is an insane start. Um, he's, at, like, he's eligible for England and Scotland, and I don't think he's made a professional debut for all like a... A competitive debut for either of the nations, so he can get called up by either of them. There's a bit of a race there. Um, yeah, I, if I was Scotland, I'd snap that up straight away. Um, yeah, no, Karamoka Dembele, excellent last night. Um, what do you make of uh, QPR as a whole in this season? You spoke before how you know you were um, you know excited to actually go and watch QPR play. Marty Cifuentes impressing you. They did well to survive last season. What, what's your view on things? Yeah, I think that, um, I said before, I think an improved season for them would be finishing inside the, in the top half. Like, oh, that, that would be a massive improvement. Maybe that's not being um, ambitious enough with a manager like Martin Cifuentes. Um, however, you know, bear in mind, last season it looked at one point that they were absolutely doomed. Um, I think that that would be a massive improvement. Could they push on further? Like, they've got the manager to do it. Um, they've got some some qual- like the quality players we mentioned. Have they got quality throughout the whole squad um, compared to some of their uh, some of their peers? Perhaps not. Um, but last night's a really good result, and if they can keep building and keep um, getting those performances, and I, it's not necessarily like a performance where they've absolutely dominated. But what's encouraging is that they didn't have a great first half, but they, they limited it to one nil. They, they stuck in there and then they turned it round and I think that they have that quality now to sort of stick in games and, and not let them get away from them. So I think that that's a really important quality and I think they'll pick up plenty of points. I don't think they're going to be anywhere near as low as they were last season um, as long as Marty Cifuentes stays in the dugout because obviously there's always a risk that the manager, there's a few teams in, in the Championship who have got young, exciting managers um, from the continent but obviously... Now, there's always the risk that these managers turn heads and, and end up getting taken elsewhere. Right, Rob Edwards finished, right? Uh, hard to say, hard to say he's finished, but it's um, he's not a promising start. I don't know if he's under pressure early, but he looked like a man under pressure at full time. I'm not going to suggest that he's uh, he's 
no, he's going to get the sacks or anything like that. But it, he looked um, dejected at full time. He looked like obviously that, that part of that is the big moment that comes um, with Joe Taylor's miss. But also, I think part of it he looked a little bit frustrated in as much as as what more um, can I do and and why are things not working. Um, yeah, it's not been it's not been a great start for them by any stretch of the imagination. Obviously, I hope that he that he turns it round. Um, very quickly, but um, it's been there's a lot of talk about him already, um, and I think that he, he will turn it around. But it's not been a great start to the season for for Luton or Rob Edwards. For any Luton or football fans uh, watching, yeah, I, I was just joking. It has only been um, four games into the season. But what, what do you think is going on for Luton then? Because when you look at their attack, you know, Carlton Morris had a bow. Like they've got some really strong, um, strong, strong players in there. What, what is going wrong? Yeah, I think that the, the well, the first is. Um, Again, a bit of a cliche, but it's the hangover from coming down. I know that other teams have adapted, um, but other teams have also had a bit of a change. Um, Luton have obviously have a little bit of a change, but they've got the same manager. It feels very um, similar to, like, like we mentioned, some of the players that did well in the Premier League. They're still kind of so very similar. So maybe there's a little bit of hangover there. I also think watching last night, they just sort of um, lacked a little bit of open play creativity. I thought they looked very. Um, very samey. It was very get the ball wide, get the ball into the box, get get crosses in. Um, which I think in the championship, obviously there are some very good te- like teams that defend in the box, um, and I think that it could be a struggle for them from that in that regard. Obviously, the chance they on comes from across, and they actually work that really really nicely. Um, and they kind of uh, shaped to go one way, and then went back the other, and it opened the space for the for the the cross from the left, and I thought that was really nice. Um, but sometimes it's a little bit too choreographed that they're going to go wide, get the ball in the box, and you can defenders can get set and to, to deal with it. So, um, yeah, I think maybe there's an element of that. I think they'll all be, they'll all be fine, but um, I think that it's, it is a, it's not, is it a concern to start after four games? No, because obviously there's still 42 games left to go, but they would have hoped to have picked up more than just one point after four. That's, that's for certain. Certainly not the start that anyone was um, expecting so far. I mean, when you look at their stats before that game, that I mean, they're around like mid table in terms of like attacking stats. They're tenth in the league for shot creating actions. They're taking about twelve shots per game as well, which is around the halfway mark. Tenth for xG to I mean, yeah, it, I think there's a lot of time left for Luton. Um, I think they'd be silly to throw it all away with Rob Edwards this early on in the season, considering the attacking power they have. I just think they're, they're massively under-converting right now. Um, I'm going to ask you, first of all, man of the match from that game, Tom? I'm going to have to go for Frey. He creates the goal, he scores the goal. Um, ultimately, he's a match winner. I know it's a bit um, a bit easy to go for the, for he, the goal. He was score. excellent. He, he was excellent. Yeah, yeah exactly. So, he was just so good. He, he was the match winner. Like He, he turned the game. And, I mean, that, that, that for me is enough to, to get him the man of the match. Okay, and then next one. Where do you think I want to like a spot on prediction where you think QPR finished the season and, and Luton as well? Luton's really tough. I'll come to Luton in second. I QPR. I think they'll they'll finish in the top half. I'm gonna go for tenth. I think I'll go for tenth or eleventh around that sort of ballpark because you know um, I think they'll be a top half side. Maybe a little bit short of the playoffs, but I think they're, they're going to be fine. I really like Martin Fuentes. Um, as a manager, I, I know they're just outside the playoffs at the moment. Um, obviously, they've played a game more, but I think come the end of the season, they'll be they'll be in and around those positions. I think Beck Luton uh, before the season started, I thought they'd be in the playoffs um, for certain. Uh, again, it's early to, to to write them off saying they're not going to finish the playoffs just because they've had a, a poor first four games. I think they'll be in and, and around. I will go for sixth. I'll say they'll turn it round and 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 get in those playoffs just because of the amount of attacking quality they've got. Um, and I didn't think last night they were particularly. They weren't awful. Just like the, the minute, like the chance at the end, Joe Taylor, who I massively rate by the way, and I really hope he gets a chance this season. I was a bit gutted for him because he, there was rumours of him going, and he stayed, and that was his chance to really push for the first team, and he missed the header. It, that chance goes in. We're, we're probably not talking about Luton uh, as having massively struggling. You know, it's always a last minute equaliser for them. Could this? be the spark to turn them around. So I think if they can get those moments right, which they have got the forwards that can do that, then they should be fine. So I'll go for sixth, but maybe I'm slightly more cautious on them than, than I was before. All right, brilliant, Tom. Um, yeah, guys, uh, well, to, to back that up, um, not quite back it up, 
We did a video last week. We did our teams we think are most in danger of championship relegation. Isaac actually picked Luton Town as his third spot. Um, I think he, he wanted to go a bit out there, but he looked at the XG no, or he looked at the numbers and he wasn't too pleased. But yeah, no, all right, you're going sixth. Isaac's got them in the bottom three. Um, Tom, you'll be, uh, and if you want to go and watch that video, check out the Football Park YouTube channel. Tom will be joining us in the studio on Monday for another full episode of Extra Time. We're going to be going over plenty of topics from the weekend, all the EFL action. There's also going to be another giveaway, which you can enter. Um, Johnny Birch has won his uh, two free tickets to an EFL game of his choice and an EFL shirt of his choice as well. So if you want to be in with a chance of winning prizes like that, watch Monday's show, enter the giveaway, fill out the drop form. They'll be attached to all the videos next week. And uh, yeah, uh, well, uh, Tom, thanks for joining me, mate. Looking forward to Monday. Yeah, absolutely. I loved it last time. And um, yeah, get entering the giveaway because obviously a very good, good prize to win. So uh, get on that.